It's no secret the New Orleans Police Department is facing a shortage of officers, but there will be an increase in police on New Orleans streets this summer. Erica Ferrando joining us live now to explain programs the NOPD chief announced today to try and help. Erica. Sharice, the New Orleans Police Department anticipates an increase in crime over those summer months. That's why they anticipate a spike in crime. Now, a lot of people don't understand. And when they sit there talking about crime, they're talking about violent crime. We're not talking about jaywalking or loitering. <laughs> Even all those things, shoplift, everything's going to go up, especially smash and grab. But the reason they're anticipating the, um, a spike in crime that a lot of people won't tell you um, because they don't have the, I guess, I don't know, whatever. But here's the thing. In some communities, violence spikes in the summertime. Not only because the hot weather gives people more things to do and makes people come out more and, you know, the daylight saving time. So the days are longer. The, 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 there's more hours of daylight. But the number one reason why violence spikes in the summertime in sun communities like New Orleans, which is 60% sun, is because sun kids and sun teens are no longer being babysat for seven hours a day in these places that they call public schools, which are basically teen daycare centers. And those kids don't have to get up at the crack of dawn to go back the next day. So you have them there in that place for seven hours a day. And then, of course, yeah, the, from from three o'clock till around 10 is crazy. But then they have to prepare for the next day. They have to go to bed. Now, yes, yeah, a lot of kids that's going to just be still running the streets, but not. Not many. Most kids are in the house at a reasonable time. Well, reasonable, I mean 10 o'clock on weekdays during the summertime that is not the case they have nowhere to go in the morning they have nowhere to be all day and that's what spikes crime Sharice, the New Orleans Police Department anticipates an increase in crime over those summer months. That's why from early June through August, New Orleans police officers will work longer hours and Louisiana State Troopers will step in to help. I know how they be carjacking women and I'm, a, I'm very scared of that. This new <laughs> you know how they be carjacking women's. And I'd be very scared of that. What years? Is it 1866? <laughs> like, like Tommy used to say, man. <laughs> they talk like slavery ended 3.7 seconds ago. <laughs> they literally act like somebody just came around and said, all right, y'all free. And this was, and they put a mic in her face. Any thoughts on the Emancipation Proclamation, ma'am? <laughs> but listen, let's, aside from that, we give it up for sisters. Sisters get the best interviews, man. They the gift that keeps on giving with these news stations, man. They the gift that keeps on giving. Um, What she said was very important. Don't let that, don't let what, she said, get lost in how she said it. I know how they be carjacking women, and I'm, I'm very scared of that. This New Orleans resident doesn't feel safe in her own city. I'll be inside every night for a dog. 
and she's not alone in her concerns. Um, I feel safe during the day. At night, you just have to be cautious. Andrea Iovino heard gunshots at the balcony bar on Magazine two weeks ago. It's just two blocks from her home. And I was really scared. I thought it was going to... Oh, it sounded so close. But in an effort to make New Orleans safer this summer, NOPD Superintendent Sean Ferguson announced more officers will be on the streets. As part of a new pilot program, NOPD officers will move to 12-hour shifts for three months. Wow. 12-hour shifts for these officers for three months. This is a national so I know no one else is going to do this. But I think that we here, we need to give these New Orleans police officers their due. A round of applause. Not only a round of applause. Highlight this, man. These New Orleans police officers are about to do 12-hour shifts every day. In a dangerous city. Which increases the likelihood of them being shot or killed which increases the likelihood of them be getting burnt out. They're going to burn out, which increases the likelihood of them, you know, having stress-related, you know, symptoms because this is a dangerous city, man. Um, sun men down there and the sun teens down there, they're a different breed, man. They are a different breed. If you've been following my channel, and I think Black Gen Z does some stories on New Orleans every now and then. They, they are wild down there. So salute to these cops, man. Because this is going to be a challenge for them, man. This ain't just something that's going to be easy. But they're doing it to keep the people safe. And the majority of the people they're keeping safe are some people. And poor gliders. A lot of them gliders down in New Orleans don't have a whole bunch of money. I know they say yeah, all gliders are rich. All gliders got privilege. Not them gliders down in New Orleans. Not all of them. Um, they, they got a lot of poor gliders down there, man. Um, I was down there in 2015. Got a lot. In fact, the majority of the panhandlers down there are gliders. As part of a new pilot program, NOPD officers will move to 12-hour shifts for three months. We have heard the concerns of our citizens. And by having more officers on the streets through, uh, through this undertaking of this new shift in the deployment, we hope to improve our response times, deter any furtherance in crimes, and create more visibility in our communities. Superintendent Ferguson also announced the return of Operation Golden Eagle, which is a partnership with Louisiana State Police. And we will provide troopers in those high crime areas. The operation ran last summer as well, and according to Ferguson, it resulted in a 35% decrease in violent crime. We intend to make sure the city continues to benefit again this summer. So the goals are the same. In addition, the city is implementing a curfew plan for the summer. Kids 17 and under will have to be home by 8 p.m. during the week and 9 on weekends. There you have it. Boom. There goes the dynamite. The sun teens got to be in the house, man. Sun teens got to be in the house. 8, eight o'clock on weekdays and 9 o'clock on weekends. See what I told you? I, I hadn't even seen this video. See what I told you? See what I told you, man? I told you, man. I thought this video was about cops working a 12-hour shift. They buried the lead, man. So the... <laughs> These sneaky police department, man. They gonna get all the credit for uh <laughs> they gonna get all the credit for crime going down. But really the real <laughs> reason crime gonna go down is cause the sun teens gonna be off the streets, man. <laughs> sun teens got a curfew, man. And I think every city should do this, man. Every city. Every city should be safe. Should have the right to be safe. 
Because who's driving the crime in all these cities, in all these major cities, all these flagship cities, not just like random, rando cities. I mean, the flagship cities, L.A., Chicago, New York, D.C., Atlanta, New Orleans, Miami, all the flagship cities, man, Denver, Portland, Seattle. Minneapolis, all of our flagship, Cleveland, Phoenix, <laughs> Milwaukee, Boston, all of our flagship cities in this country are being made unsafe by sun teams. And I think they should implement this nationwide. If you did this, you may not need to do a crime bill. <laughs> Honestly, I mean, I'm not joking. You know, I'm a, I'm a proponent for a crime bill. If you did this, you may not need to do a crime bill. Until, <laughs> until you know, the um, sisters come out and cry racism and then you got to stop doing it. <laughs> but here's the thing. This is how out of touch sisters will be, man, when they start crying racism about this. Guess who else got to be in the house at 8 o'clock on weekdays and 9 o'clock on weekends? Anybody? Let's let, um, let's let Alex. Alex Trebek, man. You guessed it. What are who are <laughs> crouching tiger teens, glider teens, Patel teens, and some on Brito teens <laughs> that are all going to be punished. By being having to be in the house on eight, in the summertime, you know the little glider teens that you know worked all year probably did do one carjacking in this city. Probably didn't do one smash and grab in the city. <laughs> little Patel teens, little Crouching Tiger teens didn't do one home invasion in the city. Didn't do one murder in this city. Made good grades, participated in extracurricular activities. And now, here's summer. Summer is upon us. And they got to be in the house at 8 o'clock. <laughs> because the damn sun has been running around killing and robbing and carjacking them. Old ladies, <laughs> God, Jack, and old ladies. And severing their arms from their bodies. Like the one story we did not too long ago. And then just think. We'll have to see sisters out there marching and carrying on, including the sister we saw earlier that's, you know, <laughs> she'll be out there too. She will be out there. <laughs> when does the curfew start June? Um, now the school's over. I give it to June 15th before sisters start crying racist. But really, it's the Crouching Tiger teens and the Glider teens and the Patel teens that are being treated unfairly by this system. But they don't have to have 
They not they don't have to have um thoughtfulness or reflective, be reflective enough to see that. They can just go out there, yell racism and a bunch of news cameras will come down there and <laughs> ask them a bunch of questions, man. Continues to benefit again this summer. So the goals are the same. In addition, the city is implementing a curfew plan for the summer. Kids 17 and under will have to be home by 8 p.m. during the week and 9 on weekends. First time or two, we're going to take that child home. But that third time, we will be uh, looking for the parents and holding them accountable. Their parents should tell them what time they need to be home, not the police. You know what? What you just said there, man? We're going to give you a break right now. But June 15th, you're going to be branded a racist for saying that. <laughs> Insensitive. You don't know. It's easy for you to say with all your privilege. Look how privileged you are. Operation Golden Eagle and the 12-hour shift change will run from early June through the end of August while kids are out of school. Why isn't there a program all year round like that? I hope it do help. I really do. Now, a few of the goals of Operation Golden Eagle are to help human trafficking victims get out of their situations, to arrest fugitives, and to get illegal guns off the streets. Reporting live from New Orleans, Erica Ferrando, Eyewitness News. Well, that violent crime has left so many families reeling. And while some arrests have been made, giving families some closure, others are left in the dark. Well, that is the case for the family of Brian Bradley and Brandon Veal. An unbelievable story we told you about in Eyewitness News one year ago. Three brothers murdered within seven days of each other. Wow. My God. Three brothers murdered within seven days of each other. Now, from the time of their murders in February of last year until today, the Metropolitan Crime Commission recorded nearly 300 more homicides. Do you want to see what those 300 homicide victims look like? Ex specifically, the ones who died from gunshot wounds. Off to the gun war. Fatal gunshot victims in New Orleans. <sighs> Even when they don't have a picture, you can tell it's a son person. Jaleel Broadway, Jamont Love. <laughs> It's just a genocide going on in all these cities, man. And unfortunately, no one cares about these lives because they weren't taken by a, a manifesto writing <laughs> glacier glider. Look at this, man. Look at this. I'm going to go all the way back to what the brothers got killed in February last year. Just to show you. Just to show you. I mean. This is every city man. This is every city. Every state. Every town. Those of you who've been following the channel for a while, y'all know. Okay, here we are. We're back to February. Here go the brothers right here. Here they go, the Veal brothers. They're all right here. That's them right there. All right. And you won't hear peep about this on the mainstream media. Not a peep. Now, from the time of their murders in February of last year until today, the Metropolitan Crime Commission recorded nearly 300 more homicides, 
leaving the Veal brothers' father to wonder if he'll ever get justice in his son's brutal murders. Here's my special report. In the dark, a family search for answers. Small yet priceless moments. We really got a baby now, man. Baby. Three generations together. This your yeah. big daddy. You're going to know who this is, man, regardless. Yeah. You're going to know who this is. You have to. I see you, boy. This is who you're going to rely on if something ever happened to me, man. Oh, wow. Wow, to you right now, Lord. We ask that you be with us in this service, Lord, that you would strengthen this family, Lord, my family, that you'll hold us up. Lord. It was just such a senseless ambush. They loved their family, and their family loved them dearly. I've saw reports of people losing multiple children in their lives, but three in one week, you know, man, it, it's just, it's insane. They were each other's best friends. We would not give up, we would not stop. All these murders, it's every night. A barrage of bullets. There's been a lot of violence in the city of New Orleans. And kids are supposed to bury them. Barrage of bullets. There's been a lot of violence in the city of New Orleans. And kids are supposed to bury the parents. You're not supposed to bury your kids. Could be any family standing here together in our position. My whole life has changed. Okay, I got one. What do you call a deer with no eyes? I don't know what you call a deer with no eyes. I have no idea. <laughs> Silly kids. They were very silly. Yeah. They were very, they were a bunch Jokers. of comedians. Yeah. yeah, they were just silly kids. More than one year after losing Brandon, Brian, and Bradley Veal in one week, their family is still in the dark, both literally and figuratively. We're sitting here and we have you all in silhouettes because are you still living in, in some sort of fear? Or are you still kind of feeling like that you're in danger because this case hasn't been solved? Definitely, definitely. Um, to know that whoever the perpetrators are, are still walking around doing whatever, and we have no idea who they could be or who they are. And while you haven't seen their faces, they've made sure their thoughts and voices are heard and seen. One of those voices is that of the boy's father, whose name we won't share. Every day is just a painful moment, so anybody experiencing, you know, death like that and then it being unsolved is a super unfairness. I was with my brother and we were out of town hanging out. We parted ways and my brother was driving home and I got a call. And he was very upset and he began to tell me what had just transpired with Brian. Brian Veal was shot and killed February 13th at Loyola and Washington in Central City. I actually got a call from my son because uh, his, his brothers was on, on scene. Brian Veal, the middle child, was murdered on the corner of Washington and Loyola on February 13th of 2021. As their family says they always are, the brothers were together. Brandon wasn't hurt, but Bradley, the youngest brother, was hit twice. He called me from jail. They detained him? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, both of them. Both of them. Yeah, they said that was the only way that they could contain them and get control of the scene. It should be a normal thing to have hysterical brothers seeing their brother getting murdered on the street. We asked New Orleans police why the brothers, one who was suffering from two gunshot wounds, were allegedly detained. We did receive a response in time for this report, but we did request the incident report. And on it, no mention of the brothers being detained or why. So you're learning that your son, nephew, was murdered. Right. And your other two sons are in jail. So right. those are two things that that hit you at, at one at one time right they were walking down the street and they told me that the guys just picked on them they noticed a car following them and they finally pulled up on them and then they started shooting out of the car that's what he told me and when i talked with the detectives that's the same thing they said they had civilians of the, the car pulling up and just shooting at them this I know that you guys, when and I tell you guys that it, at all times of the day in these major cities, there's groups of sun men riding around, hunting, looking for prey, looking for Vicks, 
looking for people walking alone, looking for people getting in and out of their cars, looking for people, women, elderly people, walking on secluded streets, looking for other sun men to use his target practice or to start stuff with. And I try to tell you guys that, and I know you guys roll your eyes when I say that. It, it, I mean, we know it's bad, but uh, it can't be that bad. I mean, <laughs> come on, Ock Nation. I mean, it's not that bad. Yes, it's that bad. They were walking down the street, and they told me that the guys just picked on them. They noticed a car following them, and they finally pulled up on them, and then they started shooting out of the car. That's what he told me. And when I talk with the detectives, that's the same thing. They said they had surveillance of the, the car pulling up and just shooting at them. The surveillance video is likely from a camera close to the corner of Washington and Loyola, where an NOPD crime camera is placed. Was that surveillance ever revealed? Not to me. I haven't yeah, seen awesome. nothing. This family joined the ranks of so many families across New Orleans, devastated and confused. A bond between the Veal brothers broken, with Brian's life ripped from them in front of their very eyes. But Brian's murder was only the beginning of what would turn into a heartbreaking week for the family. You lose one of your sons and a week later, can you kind of take us back to that particular day? Earlier that day, my brother had gone up there to talk to his other two sons, and the mother about getting everything finalized yeah. to bury Brian. And I had just sent them some money for them to eat that afternoon. My last words that I heard from them was, we love you, Dad. Thank you. Thank you, Dad. We love you, man. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. Their father says the two brothers walked to the bank after speaking with their dad and later to a local McDonald's to get food. And on their way back, home to feed their mom and themselves that they were murdered they were ambushed the father tells me detectives say a camera was also at the scene of that murder still it wasn't captured if it had happened a couple of seconds sooner they could have gotten it off of the the street camera and i'm like are you serious these cameras don't work like they're supposed to every second so this sister's in favor of around the clock, 24 hour, second for second surveillance of sun people in their communities. And so am I. Only difference is she really don't know that's what she's saying. She probably woke as hell. And she probably just saying, you know what I'm saying? She probably just being honest. You know, she'll probably show up at the next BLM protest, not realizing that she's for a second, for a second, I mean every second of the day, some people being surveilled in their communities in an attempt to make it safer and prevent the genocide going on in these cities. If it had happened a couple of seconds sooner, they could have gotten it off of the the street camera. And I'm like... Are you serious? These cameras don't work like they're supposed to every second. These boys were, were general giants. <laughs> I just want to debunk the whole idea about, you know, African-American men not taking care of their kids. And those boys were loved. They were not street kids. They were, they were not castaways. They were not in that realm. And it's just like every other murder in the city you think that they did somebody wrong. That's why they were murdered. And that's the perception that people have when that's not the case. Yet. And you're looking at three unarmed yeah, they black unarmed. men. They, mm -hmm. If they were into something, right. especially if my brother was gunned down one week and I'm coming out, I'm not coming out exactly. without being armed. Exactly. If, if I'm into anything, exactly. these kids were unarmed. How do I say goodbye? To what we had. A funeral for one within a week turned into a funeral for three. One that wasn't highly publicized out of fear. We were very limited who we invited. I hired Jefferson Parish. 
just to make sure that we didn't have any kind of incidents there. We're like, we sit here with you today knowing exactly what we knew back then. Nothing. Nothing. It's so hard to say goodbye. And it isn't for a lack of trying. Email correspondence between the brother's aunt and almost every level of city government show they've been in constant contact for a year straight. New Orleans police hope the donated billboard will be a visual reminder leading to new information. There were even billboards and bus stop signs purchased by the family with help from anonymous donors. Some calls in, but they said nothing really led to anything substantial. One email between the aunt and NOPD detectives indicates the suspect's vehicle was found. They tried to burn a vehicle, but they didn't, but they weren't, they, they weren't truly successful. They were able to uh, retrieve it before everything was burnt out, and so they sent it to get it swabbed for DNA and everything. With the dwindling police force and still in the dark more than a year later, the family says they've lost hope. Not in their fight to find answers, but in the very police department they're relying on for help to bring the Ville brothers' murderers to justice. I just think they're swamped. I just think they're smothered. Do you feel like it just, with them being understaffed and not taking the extra steps to bring extra help in is now at the expense of everyone in the community? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. How evil some of these sisters are. And I'm not saying no. She knows. She's a news reporter. She knows better than anyone that the police were defunded. That the communities came out and protested, lambasted, belittled, neutered, and delegitimized the police. The city councils and the local governments cut the funding from the police. That's why the police are working 12-hour shifts down there now. And listen to what this sister says about the police department that keeps her little behind safe while she's in that news station. And when she's walking to the parking lot for her car and in her little, probably all glider neighborhood in the suburbs. Swamped. I just think they're smothered. Do you feel like it just, with them being understaffed and not taking the extra steps to bring extra help in is now at the expense of everyone in the community. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. yeah. Admit you have a problem. If you have an issue, deal with it the, the, the right way and call in for help. Our elected officials need to step up and take control of our city. Now, I will give this sister credit because she's, she's, she's two for two. It's the elected officials, man. They weren't defunded. <laughs> they got all the funds in the world, man. But they on that liberal train of liberal policies and same old tire pop midnight basketball and rec center. But I will give them credit for signing off on that curfew. Our elected officials need to step up and take control of our city. We know nothing and we just want answers. They deserve that. So it is in this time, Lord, that we reach out to you, Lord, that we lift our eyes into the hills from which cometh our help. Brandon Bryan and Bradley's father recorded another video, one that he hopes to show one day to Brandon's son, capturing a moment their family may never forget. Remembering three lives lost, one of those being his father's. Oh, wow. All right, little man. As his young life was just beginning. Well, the NOPD did get back to us with a few of those questions that we had about their investigation of this case. They confirmed that Brandon and Bradley were arrested after the shooting of their brother and booked with battery on a police officer, but they didn't go into detail about exactly what happened that evening. They also confirmed the vehicle used in the shooting of Brian Veal was found, and the suspects did attempt to set it on fire. DNA evidence was gathered and processed, but police say they still have no matches. A Crime Stoppers reward of $10,000 is still available. So if you have any information that can help police, you can give them a call at 504-822-1111.